Hey everybody, we're going to tie the Iron Blue Nymph uh, according to Lysenring in his book, The Art of Tying the Wet Fly. And here's the recipe, crimson or claret silk, two turns of very short cock jackdaw throat hackle, two or three soft white fibers tied very short, and then of course a spun body of dark mole on crimson or claret silk with two or three turns of the silk exposed at the end. Here's an actual fly tied by Jim Lysenring. It looks like claret to me, not crimson in this particular case. Here is uh, the recipe by Skews in the way of a trout with a fly. Um, we have mole fur again as part of the body, but here it's on crimson silk. Uh, two or three uh, hackle fibers from uh, a soft hackle white for the tail, and then jackdaw again. Um, jackdaw seems to be pretty common with uh, the iron blue and was sure in the Yorkshire spiders, and there's the jackdaw there. And as you saw, uh, using a hen hackle, there's the body spun on claret. I'm using claret silk, and here's the claret silk. For the tail, I'm going to use hen um, saddle fibers from a hen feather um, for the tail. So just tying in the claret, uh, and this is the methodology for tying the fly in The Art of the Wet Fly by James Lysenring. Using claret, as I said, there's the jackdaw hackle. And I'm gonna tie it in by the stem with the feather facing over the eye. And then I'm gonna wrap about halfway back on the hook bend. This is, of course, a modern hook, barbless hook here. And then once I get there to the middle, I'll remove the stem or the remaining portion of the stem. Here's that hen saddle feather and I'm just taking two fibers from it to make the tail. Now it says short, uh, but if you saw the picture, if you recall from the picture and even the picture in the book, The Art of the Tying Wet Fly Short, it's not really that short. Uh, looks looks kind of long to me, but that seems to be the measurement. So I'm going based on that. Keeping the fibers on top and tying back to the end of the bend, just removing the waist. There's the spun body. And again, uh, uh, this is dark mole on claret silk. And leaving a little space there because you need to have uh, two to three turns of the silk exposed at the tail end of the bend. Uh, at the bend, sorry. I'm just tightening up the, the spun body as it may have come unwound a little bit as I was playing around with it. And so getting two, two and a half-ish pure silk turns there at the bend before we get into the mole fur. And I'm trying to kind of do that football-y shape where it's a little bit thicker in the middle than as you get close to the hackle, tying it off with two turns. Clip away the waist. Uh, you may have seen that there was a fair amount still on that spun body. I, I'll use that and, and tie a second fly. Uh, whoops. Slipped out there a little bit on my hackle pliers. Jackdaw giving me so one and a half, two turns almost there, looks like. And just using the side of the scissors there to knock out that tip. The jackdaw is supposed to be short, also mentioned, but as you saw in the picture, it's... You know, it's it's still longer than the the gap of the hook. Uh, at least Jim's fly that he tied is that way. So I'm kind of keeping with that measurement. Tie it off, run the silk through the hackle, 
wrap towards the eye, back, pushing the, the hackle back, and then a three or four turn whip finish, and your fly is done. Whoops, I snipped the silk a little too far away there. A little primping. Play around with that tail. Get those two fibers separated. Spread apart. And there's your 360 of the fly. Some more primping. Can't resist. Another 360. And that's the pattern. Lacquer as you will. Here's a little bit of a close-up of the fly. And thank you much. Bye-bye.